Well, hopefully as we go along, you'll get a better sense of what I'm getting at with that title. Nanotechnology, really small stuff. We're talking about uh, particles and uh, making things down at the level way below the size of the cell, uh, but not quite down to the level of the atoms. So what's ethics got to do with that? Am I asking something like, is chemistry ethical or not? Well, a lot of it is not so much to do with the, uh, the ethics of nanotechnology as a whole, but what are we going to use these new devices for? What with this new information? What are we going to do with it? And when Forbes magazine looked back at some of the earliest applications of nanotechnology, we see things like new baseball bats, the iPod Nano, of course, uh, odorless stockings, uh, paints that uh, wouldn't uh, uh, do any, uh, would clean itself, stuff like that. And we contrast this with life expectancy around the globe, and we see huge divergences from uh, the late 30s for some parts of the world uh, up to some parts of the world where your average life expectancy is over the 80s. Uh, so the ethical aspect of part of all of this is at the very beginning where this investment is going to go, who's going to actually benefit from the amazing uh, uh, developments that are going to occur in this area. Another aspect of all of this is that much of the investment is coming from public funds, but who knows about what's actually going on here. In the U.S. this year, it's over a, a billion and a half U, uh, dollars went into this area. The EU and Japan are putting similar quantities in there. And so we have to ask, you know, what's our responsibility to know about this whole area? And some people are saying this uh, nanotechnology is not only going to revolutionize the products, but it's going to transform us, ourselves, into something better. Who do we want changing our nature and uh, in what sort of direction? Well, much of this originated with a vision that Richard Feynman, a Nobel Prize winner in physics, had in 59. Uh, and he talked about how physicists could eventually write the Encyclopedia Britannica on the head of a pen. He also mentioned that someday we'd be having uh, surgeons floating through our uh, bloodstream. And uh, this idea was picked up in uh, the film The Fantastic Voyage, and you can think of a lot of other science fiction vi uh, videos where we've got stuff floating through our uh, blood doing all sorts of uh, weird and wonderful stuff to us. So in my title, the real uh, initially is uh, to do with what science fiction telling us about what nanotechnology is up to. And in the other corner, you had uh, a nanotube, one of the initial products that is uh, based on nanotechnology. Now, this is not just about Hollywood using nanotechnology. Some scientists are actually using the science fiction to promote what they're doing. That uh, uh, story uh, was claiming that what had already been developed was some nanoparticles that weren't quite big enough to allow Raquel Welch to kind of sit in the sub. Um, so what I kind of developed is that we've got two whole areas of nanotechnology. We've got a normal nanotechnology, stuff that's right here today producing products, and we've got futuristic nanotechnology, as exemplified by Michael Crichton and Prey. And his idea is that nanotechnology will develop uh, devices that are going to gobble up the whole world and destroy everything. Uh, now, some of this is said to have been the result of just uh, fiction authors. And yet, one of the early nanotechnologists, um, um, Eric Drexler, in his book, Engines of uh, Creation, talked about gray goo, this notion that if nanotechnology devices were not properly built, they could destroy the world. It's not just a matter of good intentions idea as well as I Am Legend portrayed because the whole destruction in that movie comes about because of the cure for cancer. They found it, but it destroyed almost all of us. We've had similar things, though, on a more practical sort of level. These uh, graphs represent asbestos. The bar charts represent the production levels. The uh, red chart represents the anticipated people who are going to die of mesothelioma a cancer caused by um, asthma, and these deaths are primarily going to happen in the 2020s to 40s. So what we're going to need in the area today is precaution. And this idea has been developed in uh, what's known as the precautionary principle. So already today we have products on the market with nanoparticles. And as this says, does your sunscreen contain nanoparticles? There's a lot of them that does. Um, and yet, have we got the types of tests done to make sure that this stuff isn't going to do a, an asbestos on us? That's what we need to do and what researchers even in Ireland are actively involved in doing, and it's an essential uh, aspect of all of this. The European Commission similarly is saying that we need to have precaution as a big part of how we direct uh, the research that goes in this area. So nanoethics between the real and the real, I think uh, the science fiction can get us to think about some of this stuff, and yet we can also go back to other areas where narratives like the tale of Icarus 
can remind us that there are aspects of our human character that we need to take in, uh, into uh, account as we go forward and develop any area of science and, uh, and, and have it impact society for good. Thank you very much.